Good day, my name is Shol and I work for Micrographics. Uh, we can be found on the web at uh, www.mgfx.co.za. Right, so in this video uh, we are going to show you how to add a truss um, that would uh, be hosted or uh, attached to the underside of our roof just to fill in the, 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 the open space that we see here in our little building. Right, so the first process or the first step is to perhaps go to our uh, level um, as you can see there's the ground floor and the, and the second level or the, the roof level in this case right so if I go there um, I, I see my my roof and the reason why it's kind of a chopped off is because of the view range um, I can go and set uh, the view range just so that um, it's uh, just a little bit higher I just simply add some zeros there and there we go right so um, I see now my my whole roof and uh, what I can do is just uh, show it as a wireframe so I can see my my walls underneath right now I want to go and add a uh, truss and it's found in the structure tab and there's the truss tool now creating the truss um, it asks me if there's none loaded it asks me if if you are one to load one now the reason why there's none loaded is this is an architectural template and um, there's no trusses uh, in in I suppose this uh, template so I'll go and say yes let's load it in I'll go to the uh, UK library for instance and uh, I'll go down to the structural uh, trusses now as you can see these are these are various uh, number of them um, the ones that I'm going to use is uh, not the triangular truss even though my shape underneath the roof is triangular I'm going to use a uh, flat uh, truss now the reasoning behind that is that eventually when I've placed this Pratt truss is that I will attach it to the underside of my roof right so I'm going to use the flat Pratt truss so I'll uh, uh, open that now um, by default this uh, truss uses uh, any available structural members now if I go to structure and I go to beams you'll notice these only um, uh, steel members so uh, to uh, to make sure that uh, perhaps in our case we want wood to m it's attached to our truss I will go and load in some um, structural members so I'll go uh, to the uh, tab insert load family and I'll scroll down in the UK library to structural framing maybe wood dimensional lumber and then uh, I'll use a size equal to 38 by 114 right so that's loaded in now going back to our truss I will just make sure that uh, the wood uh, size or object or uh, member is attached to that truss. Now I can go, this is the standard one, I can go and duplicate or rename in this case I'm not going to. Right, um, you, we, what we have here is uh, in the preview we have four colors. Those four colors represents each of these parts. The top chord is the or, uh, uh, pink one so I'll change that to the 114 by 38 piece of lumber. The vertical webs are the uh, uh, black ones and then the diagonal web is the green ones and then the bottom cord is the blue one all right okay so that's all set up so all those different parts of my truss have now been assigned a wooden uh, element right now I'm able to go and place this element and I'll place it just strategically uh, just in front of the section right then going to that section you will see in this case um, it's been placed on the ground um, and I'll just uh, adjust uh, the offsets and uh, um, have a, a better looking truss. Right, as you can see with regards to the, the heights, um, because it's a structural element uh, it places it uh, on the analytical uh, side of the uh, structural truss which um, is in the center so in my case I just want to lift it slightly so I'm going to say um, uh, I wanted 57 just above the um, 
level, meaning that uh, uh, that's half of 114. Right, so it sits uh, just above that level. Right, and uh, I have my truss uh, going. Right, what I can also do is at the bottom here, you've got a, a panel width. I'm going to increase that to say two and a half meters, for instance. Right, then I'll have uh, a little less divisions. Right, what I'll also do is I'll now take this truss and see if I can attach it to the roof. So I'll click it attach to what object? To the roof. And as you do, it's in taken shape of the roof. Now, just a couple of things that uh, you might uh, want to consider is that uh, my roof object has already uh, got a, a, a rafter member and then my truss also has so it's kind of a duplication so I'm going to just uh, simply edit this structure um, just to uh, then delete the 114 member from this roof material uh, roof setup all right so now I have um, the uh, element uh, sorted right one other thing that I want to do is perhaps pull these uh, further along uh, to in, to uh, have my overhangs uh, shown. Right, how we do that is to uh, tab, hover over this member, press tab once and select. Right, what you have done then is uh, you've selected a component within the main and uh, uh, once it's selected you can then go and unpin it because it's part of a, uh, a bigger system. So once you've unpinned it, you have then the availability of these arrows, which you can then pull and push. Right, now obviously there is some sort of uh, 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 sequence and uh, uh, variation that you need to do at the bottom within your uh, uh, properties. Right, so I'll do that then for, for each of these sides. Tab, select. Alright, just um, make sure that uh, I pick the right one. Right, and uh, there I have now created a pretty simple uh, t uh, truss that is uh, very quickly uh, created and it looks like it belongs. Right, so that concludes the video on creating a truss and uh, thank you for watching.